Okay, finally, some Star Trek related content for a while. I'm uh, just going to switch straight to this is Vic Mignona, but probably the other day at uh, Anime Matsuri. And this is nothing pretty potent thing to say. Recent Star Trek TV shows, movies. No, it's the Federation itself. It's some admiral in Starfleet who turns out to be the baddie. Look what they're doing. They're totally undermining the idea of Star Trek. That humanity has come together and risen above their petty differences. And they're ripping the soul out of it. To say, oh, you know who the real bad guy is? It's those people in charge of the Federation and Starfleet. So there goes that future, <laughs> right? So a lot of, even now, like I, I, I watch, I mean, don't kill me. Live and let live, right? This is just my opinion. And if you have a different one, I love you anyway. And we'll be friends. But I watched some episodes of some of the recent Star Trek series. I won't even tell you which ones. And I sat there with my buddy Jeff. And we were watching it. We're literally, we're going, this looks like a scene out of Star Wars. It's dark. It's drab. It's dirty. No, not even. Like, you know, it just... It, 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 there was nothing, and, and, and there was so much darkness in the personalities, in the behaviors, in the attitudes, in the motivations. And I'm like, man, Star Trek is dead. Star Trek as we knew it. Some of us older people. <laughs> that Star Trek is gone. It's unfortunate, but, you know, I guess, again, the lawyers... Right? We talked about that. I guess the people that run these studios have decided they can make more money making, uh, you know, good guys, bad guys, ruining everything that was good, ripping to shreds something that was positive and pure and hopeful, and let's bash it against the rocks and let's make it hopeless and dark. I'm sorry, that's unfortunate. And you know what's really sad is if you go and look at a at a at a, um, at a list of like top movies of all time, so many of them are wonderful, uplifting, positive films because that's what I think people want. There's enough crap in your in your normal life, am I right? Do you really need to make movies about crap? No, you want to escape the crap. You want to you want to dream big, and you want to imagine something large and grand and beautiful and hopeful. And they just keep making the more, more trash. And I think it comes from here. I mean, it ultimately comes from here, y'all. Everything you ever watch, everything you ever read, everything you ever listen to starts in somebody's heart. Think about that. Before they ever recorded one word of a song or before they ever shot one piece of film, they had an idea. And that idea either comes out of a place of, I want to inspire people. I want to encourage people. I want people to dream big. Or, I'm a pervert, and I want to make perverted stuff. I want to preach my... I'm, I'm sorry, it's the truth. I want to preach my perversion to the world. I want to celebrate my creepiness. I want to celebrate my perverted idea of the world and, and make movies that celebrate violence, drugs, hatred, evil, pain. I mean, we have to deal with that stuff in our daily lives because that's just the world we live in. We're going to keep making movies about it, celebrating it. I think people would love to see more uplifting things. And I think that's why some of these little movies that get made on like $5 end up making millions. Because people want something uplifting. Sorry, I think soapbox. Sorry. Uh, uh, who asked that last question? Okay. I'll be doing more, but I'm mainly doing this right now for production purposes. So I can get back in there and to do a bigger 
something on this later. But for now, that's like this is why Star Trek continues is so damn good. CBS, Paramount, if you have any brains, you would declare Star Trek continues as canon as the fifth season. Put it up on there, and you'll you'll be surprised the ratings you'll get if you put that on the service. Stick it stick it along the end, at the tail end of uh, original series and animated series. There's your fifth season. Watch those numbers shoot up. And again, this, this part's going to be edited out anyway when the final video, but uh, quick update on the indie situation. Things are happening. I don't know what they what's happening, but things are happening weird. She was supposed to do a live stream last night with our Teddy Chan. Didn't happen. No announcement. Unfortunately, it does appear that uh, Arctic Gazer did go through with it. He probably even might have even live streamed it and you know, did a little speech. Apparently, thanking me personally for trying to help and getting, you know, but he went ahead and hung himself. And the, apparently, the paramedics in his area again were saying, take it out of the body. So it's it's going to be ugly, but it, it, I think it may finally be coming to a close one way. And hopefully, nothing's happened to Indy over this. I mean, get some resolution on that. But at least, <laughs> based on what you just saw, something to talk about besides the other drama so we'll talk at you later yeah and again apologies now for any change in the sound quality because the first one was done part of a live thing I had to get that up so i could download it later and put it on here vic pretty much nailed it right there the everything yeah anything yeah starts from the heart and if they're and if the right thoughts aren't on the heart it's not going to come out right the you know Previous, you know, stuff with and what we can, what is considered the official canon of start from the cage on through the last episode of Enterprise. As horrible as that last episode was, it, it, it's part of the canon. We, it all came from a, a place of wanting to stay true to the spirit of the show, either from Gene himself or people he employed. And the other, and then Berman, a little overzealous sometimes, but but he was trying to stay true to Gene's version of what what Star Trek was. And it and and the same thing goes with Star Trek Continues. They wanted to stay true to the original idea of Star Trek, and what the universe was, and what it represented, and how it operated. And that's why I know I'm going to ruffle some feathers. But, you know, what do you mean, Ken? You said Ken. Yeah, and also, that's why, I th- you know, cause Rod said what he did about, you know, he would, that, that if Gene were around, he would consider Star Trek Continues canon because it holds true to that vision, not just to the, the, the effect record, but the whole spirit of the entire thing. It knows what Star Trek is, and it holds to that, and pr- better better rendition of it than, you know, even some of the later series. It really is the whole spirit and the attitude of the original series. And that's why I think it should be considered part of the official canon. And again, technically, CBS already owns it. That's been acknowledged by Vic. They already own this thing. They don't have to pay him a dime. They can stick it on Paramount Plus and run it. It would be nice if they did pay them some you know, recompense for producing all this crap, you know, <laughs> but, but legally they don't have to, they wouldn't have to pay a dime. It's just, you know, get the masters, put them up on the thing and consider it the fifth season. And like I said, if they were to do that, watch the numbers shoot up for this thing. Cause now, finally, yeah, that's what we've been missing. That's Star Trek. You know, it's one of those things. It's been so damn long since we've actually seen real Star that, Again, that's why, you know, season three of Picard. Because it rang true of actual Star Trek. Even if they didn't quite hit the mark on a few things, but because they couldn't. They, were, they had to keep certain elements from the previous junk. But for the most part, Terry Mattel tried to work within those lines and, and bring back some... This is what we've been missing. The whole spirit of it and the, and the attitude. And where the, the Federation is not the bad guys. They may be inept and you know clueless at times, but they're not the evil bad guy. And that's too much of the modern stuff. Is the source of the evil and thing is Starfleet, is the Federation. 
Oh, they wanted to reflect our... No, 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 no. You can address issues in the current world. But, like you said, we go to these movies and go watch these shows to get away from this crap for a while. You know why Hollywood is failing? All these movies are bombing because they... People... And they... Again, they call it the woke thing, but the identity politics and the po- are infecting stuff we use to try to get away from this. Even sports, they start trying to put... The, you know, just want to watch a damn game. And people, you know, trying to bring over... Am I kneeling for the national... You get that shit out of here! Give me a couple hours or I'm not dealing with this shit, okay? Just reflecting the personal thing. I'm doing like, again. I'm dealing with this indie stuff over the weekend. One guy, yeah, apparently he did go through it. He videos, he live streamed it. Did a little speech before and thanking me and a few others, but trying to help. But it's like I need a break from this. Okay, just a little while. You know? That's why I did. thank you, Vic, for you know, doing that. This is an, it was an anime matsuri just over the weekend. And I've got someone said, "What do you think?" And we, yeah. He hit it. He nailed it right in the, you know, low-hanging fastball, boom, out over the center stands in the parking lot. Okay. And that's what we're really, and again, I, yeah, you could probably go back and nitpick the hell out of, you know, season three of Picard. As in, you know, like I said, it's a previous example. Oh, well, that's a, no, that's not the point, Okay. It, it, it demonstrated, yeah, you can still do genuine Star Trek. Even within the confines of this idiotic, you know, dystopian world they've created, you can still bring back actual Star Trek. And just the way they did, it's like, yeah, yeah this is more like it, you know. The ships aren't, you know, some dist- you know, The ships look like proper Star Trek ships. Congrats on bringing Bill Krause into the design team and bringing some of these Star Trek Online designs in. So it actually looks like Star Trek for you, instead of a cut and paste, you know, you know, Looks kind of vaguely Star Trek design there, and it's just copy and paste it over and over and over again. again we ain't got time or the money to come up with new designs. And lots of sharp angles because they're easier to render than a, than a curve. But yeah, it's, this is what, and also why we got some high hopes for, you know, Star Trek Legacy apparently is going to happen at some point. The, again, the network. The network may be, you know, or the studio may be a bit inept in certain ways. They've, when even going back to Desilu days, they never really understood what they had and how to handle it. They tried. And even NBC tried. The, you know, the Friday night, you know, death slot was not an attempt to kill the show. It was trying to you know, get away from competing. You know, cause if it, again, if it, if it had gone on Monday nights, it would have been walking into a buzzsaw. Because you've been going up against Gunsmoke and uh, the Avengers. And Gunsmoke may skew older, but the Avengers is definitely the same demographic as Star Trek had at the time. And it it would it, it, it been a kamikaze slot to know. And again, other shows have done very well in the Friday Night you know, 10 slot. Man from Uncle became a hit in that slot. In later years, The X Files became a mega hit in, in that Friday Night you know, slot. So I think there's a. Look, it worked for Man from Uncle. It's, it's Star Trek there. It's, it's it's not up against anything similar that's competing for that demographic. Let's put it there, you know. And again, so it's Friday night late, yeah. And it's not a school night, you know. It's, and they you know the show appealed to mostly kids, so they can stay up and watch this. It might bring in the numbers. So they tried, and yeah, I mean, Bob Justman's interview. Like they could have killed it after the first thirteen weeks in season one. They gave it three seasons. They did, you know. But yeah, a lot of it. I think a lot of it also was, you know, Paramount. You know, a lot of people say Paramount, but no, Gulf Western bought Paramount and Gulf and Desilu smashed them together, and they had no clue how to run a studio. The guys on the Paramount side knew how to defend themselves against this kind of stuff, and they held and they held up better. Desilu was not as skilled in that, and they got the axe on a lot of things. Star Trek's budget got slashed, and they saw it as a sea of red ink. But they they actually scored a, the syndication deal during the second season during the takeover. So they thought, well, there's no, we already got the deal on this. No point in putting any more money. We have to on this. It just seemed became a self fulfilling prophecy, and just the decline in quality became very apparent. About say about halfway through the season, and people really and the, the ratings really did start to suck after that. 
but for the most part, it was still holding its own for a lot of most of the first three years. I heard no, those three years. But that's getting into the weeds. Um, yeah, Vic nailed it. Then, so yeah, you want to revive Star Trek and get regenerated? Put Star Trek continues on Paramount Plus, and see what happens. And the thing, the way it's and the show is structured, just like the original series, you've got your ad breaks in there. If you really want to run ads, I'd recommend doing the like the old days and just one ad. That's the we. I even those of us who are old enough to remember really don't remember a time when it's like a commercial break was literally a commercial break, one commercial. And you're back to the show. You didn't have to have a stinger in the middle of a five episode of a five commercial breaks. You're watching. So, oh, that's what we're watching. I forgot it had been so damn long. Not until like the. Wasn't until like the last commercial break we'd have like you know two or three thirty second spots stick in there. Other than that, commercial breaks up to that point was like one commercial. If if I could, if I was allowed to do it, I'd I got a basic recreation. Because uh, somebody uh, put together a like that the film of the first repeat of Space Seed on the network, where it's got you know you know the open you know, the the teaser opening titles that Star Trek brought to you tonight by Polaroid and I remember from 1968 and then into the show and then you know and it snipped out so you only get the last bit of the episode and then end up going to the next commercial and. And the and the Polaroid commercial, and on a thing, and then another you know commercial in there, and all the, and I managed to recreate the whole thing, and also find you know, and I don't know what the preview for the week after <laughs> the episode was, but I I, went, I just went by what was when it first ran. It was the following episode was you know Taste of Armageddon, so put it together and then re- and also I had a couple of things. Uh, somebody I think was in the action of producing a complete sound effects album set and something happens so we just posted the whole thing on it on uh, on youtube and long form videos four different videos and every sound effect recorded for the show apparently is on this thing including a few voiceover bits so i think it's where we got you know I, where i got that blank william shatner doing the opening narration with no music like three different versions, one but straight, but and others with varying levels of reverb and, and flanging on it. But another one, some I, I think maybe the same thing. Got you know, this is Leonard Nimoy. Stay you know, stay tuned for scenes for our next second episode of Star Trek. And I was able to get that and put it over just a slide thing of ship Star Trek and stick in that, and then from there you know the next week on Star Trek and then the teaser and closing credits. And it rains, and it clocks out right about an hour. Yeah. And it's it's fun watching it like that because you know get the you know the following programs brought to you in the living color on NBC, and then the opening and the thing and go for it. I'll probably put it back up on uh, Patreon because I think, or I might get away with it on uh, Rumble. They they might let it fly. I will give that a shot. If it is, I'll post it but uh, for the most part it's like yeah th- th- he nailed it here it's like so with that and again on the other front things are happening I'm not quite sure what but I'm I'm trying to be hopeful that it's in a overall positive direction that thing, this thing is finally breaking up because I got a feeling that you know what I've stumbled on there in trying to nuke is not just you know couple of creepy old guys grooming a vulnerable young lady who was already, you know, doing stuff online and doing wor- worse stuff online. And then trying to, I think I may have stumbled onto a, a sex trafficking ring. So, you yeah. know. And hopefully breaking that up here, you know, and, and also hopefully nothing's happened to Indy on this because that would kind of be a very worse ending to what's already been a very bad story so far. But I'll save that for another video. Anyway, that's pretty much it for now. We will talk at you later.